Well today I may have found my new favorite airline while flying between Sao Paulo, Brazil and Orlando, Florida in the United States. That new airline being Azul Brazilian Airlines, based in Viracopos Airport, which used to be the main international airport for Sao Paulo, Brazil, until those flights moved to Guarulhos Airport, and now Viracopos Airport is left with just Azul and Gol. Now one important thing to mention is that the Viracopos Airport is a little over an hour outside of Sao Paulo. Now luckily if you are traveling on Azul, they do have a free bus that will drive you up here which you can take advantage of. You just have to sign up for the service on their website and it can take you right to the front door. Now once we're in the terminal, kind of like I mentioned earlier, the only airlines operating out of Viracopos Airport are Azul and Gol. Azul makes up about three quarters of the check-in area and the last quarter is dedicated to Gol. Azul out of Viracopos is almost entirely a domestic airline within Brazil and they have the fleet for that. They do have three international flights a day, one to Lisbon because of the close ties between Portugal and Brazil, and two to the United States, one to Orlando and one to Fort Lauderdale, since it seems like every flight from the South America has to go through Florida. Now on the far left side of the terminal is the check-in specifically for Azul International Flights, which is broken down into three lanes, the preference lane for people that need a little extra assistance, the normal customers go in the middle, and the far left is for Azul business passengers or Toto Azul Diamante, which is the highest priority of their mileage plan. After we checked our bags, we headed off to the back side of the terminal where the security line is. Now there's only one or two scanners in the security because they don't have a whole lot of international departures, which get their own wing, but that did mean that it took quite a while to get through. I would say it took probably about 30 minutes for us to get through security. But once through security, the Azul Lounge is the first thing that you're going to see on the left side before you pass through duty free and onto the gates. And since we were traveling in business class today, we got a chance to head upstairs and see what that contained for us. Now Azul was started by David Neilman, which if you're familiar with JetBlue or Breeze Airways then you're familiar with his work, but David Neilman being of Brazilian descent started Azul as a way to get within Brazil as well as connecting it to the Americas and its close ties to Portugal. But the Azul product seems to be elevating bit by bit as time goes on based on other videos I've seen and other reviews I've seen of Azul Airlines. So I'm excited to make this review for you so we can see where it is today in late 2022. The lounge was fantastic, it's super cozy, and because there's only two international flights leaving in the morning out of Veracopolis Airport, there's not a whole lot of people, so you can always find some place to sit in the middle of things, or off to the side if you want more of a private place to hang out, but you can see it's plenty comfortable, plenty of places to hang out and sit while you wait for your flight. Now look at what I was most excited for and that was the food and drink options. You can see they have the normal espresso machines and coffee machines so you can make yourself some coffee to get you through the flight and through the rest of the day. Some snacks to go along with the coffee, some macarons and some juice to go with that. But what I was most excited for was seeing what they had with the food options. So right next to the drink section was the hot food section and it was good. I was impressed. They had mostly Brazilian inspired food, but because of the two flights going to the Americas, they did have some American influence. And when I say that, what I really mean is they had bacon. So while we take a look at this case of Azul goodies, just a fun fact that I can share with you guys. Viracopos actually translates to to turn over glasses quickly, which informally translates to to get very drunk. Just a fun fact for flying out of Viracopos airport, I guess. Now one of the ways that I judge the lounge more than anything else is the type of views that it offers. Now this was an interesting lounge because it didn't actually have any views of the ramp. Instead it had views of the carts going out to the ramp with luggage and food and just some of the countryside of Brazil that we drove through on our way out here from Sao Paulo. Well, my well-rounded breakfast consisted of, of course, some bacon, as well with my new Brazilian favorite, the cheese bread, and some amazing dulce de leche churros. So I ended up with this corner pretty much to myself in the lounge, which was super comfortable, and it made for a nice place to unwind for my nine and a half hour flight to Orlando. 
but pretty soon they called for boarding and so we headed through the duty free store and onto the gate. And one of the good things about the smaller airport is it only took about five minutes to get from the lounge to our gate. Now there are two gates here, each gate with two jet bridges, that's why you'll see two numbers, and the first gate here of A2 and A4 going to Fort Lauderdale, and the second one, A6 and A8, off to Orlando. So we can see here they were getting ready to board our flight off to Orlando, and in the meantime I was going to soak up some of the views of this gate and the view of our wonderful A330, which is, just looks fantastic in this Azul paint scheme. Now one of the weird things is Viracopos really isn't that big of an airport, so here I am in my gate and if I just turn around and do a 180, we can see exactly where we came in, the tower, the entrance, the drop off area for the terminal and all that, right there. We really didn't go all that far. It's pretty compressed, but they really don't need anything more. Now this gate didn't afford fantastic views of the airplane. This was kind of the best I could get, still pretty head on, but I do think that the A330 just looks fantastic in the Azul paint scheme and even better from the inside. Now Azul boards in groups like most do, so they have the business class passengers in the B group and then numbers 1 through 3 going from there. So you can line up ahead of time and they have plenty of space for that and then they just call you up by group and you board just like most airlines do these days. Now the gate agents actually called for boarding slightly before the crew was ready, so we had to kind of stand in the jet bridge for a little bit while we waited for the green light from the crew. In the meantime though, I got to check out this other A330 of Azul. This one was pushing back for Fort Lauderdale, so we were basically going to be chasing it all the way up to Florida. I also killed time by looking at this QR code, and you can play the fun game with me of try and find the Azul logo within the QR code. Finally on board the airplane headed to the left side, we're going to be in seat 4K today, which the even numbered rows are closer to the window and offer a bit more privacy, and the odd number rows are closer to the aisle. Obviously the middle in a 1 2 1 configuration is better for couples, however, what's the point in that when you can have a wonderful window and look out at the beautiful scenery as we fly through the Caribbean? Now the most intriguing seat on this airplane has to be 5K, which from the looks of it just looks like a normal odd numbered window seat. However, if we look up you can see there's a curtain and a rail, and that curtain can actually close all the way around the seat. Now this seat does not cost extra, I could have reserved it, I just didn't know about the curtain, so I reserved 4K to be closer to the window. But this curtain does close all the way, and once we're in flight I can show you what it looks like when it actually closes up. So as you'll see, there's actually no seat numbers on the overhead panel, and it did find me a while to find that. I was able to just count four seats back from the front of the airplane. I later figured out that they were actually on the panel with the call button for the flight attendants and the lights above your seat. Now something about the seat that I was in today, it actually had a missing cushion on it, so when I put my feet up on the footrest, that hard plastic did actually poke into my leg just a little bit. So if you look at the seat next to me, to the left in the middle section, you can see what that cushion's supposed to look like, for those of you that are curious. The flight attendant did offer to let me switch over there. I offered to stay in my seat for the sake of the window. And now we'll look out the wing at what I'm convinced might be the best winglet in aviation. I've decided to appreciate the little things, like how they color the winglets, and I think the Brazil flag being on this A330 winglet is a fantastic touch to a wonderful paint job on this airplane. 
in the meantime, they were loading one of about 2 million bins that was being put on this airplane. The amount of cargo that we took for this flight was insane, and I'm not even convinced that they actually fit it all on board. So we'll look around some of these seat features. You have the footwell here, and underneath is some space. Not the biggest space, but enough space to rest your feet. And that's underneath the nice cushion with plenty of room for your feet. Next to your left side here, you have the countertop, which is pretty standard, and the seat controls, headphone jack, and USB. A small cubby, which is where they keep the amenity kit and the headphones when you get on board. That's what they'll be waiting for you. And down below that is some extra storage area for literature, and that's where I opted to keep my laptop and some chargers, as well as the safety cards and everything were stored in that area as well. Now, one thing I do want to mention is this seat did not have a ton of storage. I, the footwell was actually too small for me to fit my backpack in, and the area down by my left leg was pretty small, just pretty much stored a laptop. I ended up having to keep some extra food that I brought with me just on the seat next to me, and I ended up with my backpack in the overhead bin. Something that is kind of cool is that in that literature pocket, I realized this later in the flight, but they do have this little pull tab, and so if you do accidentally drop something in there, you pull this tab up and you can kind of go fishing for whatever you may have lost. And as boarding wrapped up and we were getting ready for our pushback for departure here, the flight attendants came around with juice, water, or champagne for us, along with a small cup of nuts. And now here's something interesting, the rampers there aren't allowed to cross that there red line. Once we're past that, it's just kind of up to the guy pushing the plane back. So now it looks empty, but I guess you just kind of have to hope it is because there's nobody keeping an eye on you anymore. As we were taxiing out, we got a look at Azul's newest member of the fleet, which is the A330neo. This one actually was going to be flying out to Lisbon a little later in the day, sometime in the late afternoon. So the A-wing of the terminal there is for the international flights and they're connected to the border patrol for arriving passengers and past that is all the domestic flights. You can see the Embraer 190s they have here, there's plenty of those, as well as some A321s that they have on their fleet as well. Those are used predominantly for flights within Brazil. Another thing that's kind of fun about Azul, and you may see some of these planes in the background, but they have a lot of special liveries. I was unfortunate not to get one on today's flight, but there are plenty across all kinds of their fleet.
And as we climbed away from Brazil, I couldn't help but think about how hot it was in this cabin. So I looked up to turn my air vent on and realized that there is no independent air vents. One of the things that I think suffers on some of these larger aircraft these days. There was a light above as well as a light over your shoulder, however, for reading. Now in an interesting fashion, the tray table is actually stored near the entrance of the seat. And to release that tray table, all you really have to do is lower the arm and you can pull the tray table out and down and it leaves you plenty of space to work and eat. And now I want to take a look at what I actually think to be one of the more complete amenity packages that they give you here at Azul. So opening it up after the nice touches on the zipper, you'll find plenty of things. Some of the normals, like toothpaste and toothbrush, but with a normal toothbrush, not the cheap travel toothbrushes. Some great Loctane hand cream and lip balm of fantastic fashion. And actually an Azul pen, I always love the pens. Tissues, hair brushes, earplugs, eye mask, and socks go along with that. So everything you could need, and then maybe even a little more for these long flights, considering their flights aren't even that long. Along with that, we also got an Azul luggage tag that we could keep with us to put on our bags after the flight. This came in the amenity kit as well, and I actually added it to my bag after landing in Orlando. The seat comes with noise cancelling over your headphones, which aren't terrible. The noise cancelling was actually pretty good. However, about halfway through the flight, they started cutting in and out until eventually they just kind of stopped working altogether. Now taking a second to explore the in-flight entertainment options on the Azul Seatback TVs, and I was pleasantly surprised by the amount of English options that I found. I actually didn't have enough time to watch the amount of things they had available to us, which is extremely surprising considering they only have two English-speaking destinations in their entire route network. Now going on a little bit more about the Inflate Entertainment, they had full seasons of a number of different shows under different types of genres, all English speaking. You can have Portuguese subtitles on them as well so everyone can enjoy them, and there was plenty of movies to go along with that. All in all, more than enough to keep me entertained. Now I swear the more I looked into the Inflate Entertainment, the more I actually found. You can see the remote here, which wasn't a surprise, I just hadn't played with it yet, but it pushes out, there's plenty of buttons on it, and a full keyboard on the back for when you're trying to search for a specific movie or TV show. Then on the screen I also later found out that on the side you can open up this side window and it actually shows your length along the flight, how far you are. You can also use picture in picture if you want to keep watching what you're watching, but maybe you want to start browsing for something else to watch as well. In addition, later in the flight, I also realized that in that small window, you can actually pull up a small map that goes through the normal pages that the normal map goes through, so you can also see where you are along your course of flight. And now to look through this custom branded menu, you can see it has our origin and destination, as well as the type of meal offered, which I thought was a fantastic touch. Now, one thing I will say with the food is that it was fantastic. It, not, it didn't blow me away, but it by no means was weak or sad. It had plenty of options, and the food was fantastic. Looking through some of the options, and you can pause if you want to read more, but the entrees had either a vegetarian or a chicken salad. Then we were offered our main dish choice of a few different types of meat. All of them seemed to be fantastic from what I saw around the cabin. After that was the dessert part of the menu where they had plenty of options once again. The banana cheesecake was what I went with and it was fantastic. And then they had some other snacks and drinks available that you can look through as well. But like I said, nothing necessarily that's going to blow you away, but it was more than enough and the food that they gave us was just fantastic.
Now when I say hot, I mean hot. These towels they came around with were hot. Obviously they cooled down, but they were nice to have before the meal. Now before the meal actually was served, they said it would be a little while. I had some nice strawberries and dates and some good fruit I got in Brazil, so I figured I'd hang out and eat those for a little bit. In the meantime, I just had to think about, can Azul beat the quality of this fruit with whatever food they're about to give me? Short answer is yes, and we'll see what that looks like shortly. And here was the main course. It was the pork shoulder along with the chicken salad and bread option. All of it was just fantastic. The pork shoulder came with a side of basically cheesy potatoes and green beans and one singular carrot spear. But it was all pretty good. A little overcooked. The bread was fantastic. Came with butter and salt and pepper for the main dish as well. But I did like these salt and pepper shakers. One of the small touches an airline can add to its meal in my opinion to just elevate it a little bit. Little mini vinaigrette that went with the chicken salad there right next to it. Not much on it. You can see the salad dressing that's already on it. Uh, but it was plenty to start the meal with. And last but certainly not least was the banana cheesecake with the caramel topping. Kind of like a flan kind of sauce. Absolutely fantastic. It was a great way to end my meal. Now for one of the few things I think Azul could actually improve on. As amazing as their in-flight entertainment options and all that is, they don't offer in-flight Wi-Fi. Now the flight's short enough, you can get by with the options that are available to you in a short nap, but if they are looking to improve, I think that might be the next step. Now looking at seat 5K in flight, someone actually did book that seat and they did take a nap and they did close the curtain. You can see it's basically the equivalent of a closed door suite, a little more flimsy obviously, but it is a lot better than the darkness you got in some of these other seats. You can see on my seat there's plenty of space, no closed curtain, but the bed did lie flat and it was plenty comfortable and I did set that up. I did actually take a good nap for about 4 or 5 hours and it went by super quick. The bedding they give you is fantastic. The pillow they give you does not feel like an airline pillow. It feels like any pillow that you'd have in your house on your own bed, to be honest. And the blanket was fantastic. It was super comfortable and plenty warm for that flight. And on that note, we're actually going to go ahead and get some sleep, and I will see you when I wake up somewhere over the Caribbean. And after a short nap, it's good to be back up and ready to explore a little bit more of this cabin. Now, I wasn't yet over the Caribbean, but I was over the northern part of South America, and the Caribbean would be coming up shortly, and I did want to see the views that it had to offer. The sleep was fantastic, the seat was super comfortable, the bedding was super comfortable, and there was a ton of foot room, especially in the even number seats where you have a little bit extra room that bleeds over on the side of the window. Now part of the reason sleep was so easy is that the cabin was kept so dark. Here's the economy cabin, you can see it's in a 242 setup, all with CPAC TVs and charging ports for them as well, except for the front cabin where one single passenger had his window open and it illuminated the entire cabin. But cabin looked comfy enough for this flight and it seemed like plenty of people were sleeping as well. And now the galley that actually is between the two different sections of the business class cabin. Once again, I love the Azul logo, they seem to put it everywhere but the colors just add a nice touch to this airplane. Now one thing that did eventually prove to be issue on this flight is that there was only two restrooms in the business class cabin, one in this galley and one in the forward galley so there was almost always a line. Restrooms were fine except that there was no flower in the flower holder which was kind of sad. Other than that it was pretty standard except for the Azul branded hand sanitizer which they mentioned the call out in the pre-flight and the post-flight survey asking if there was sufficient sanitizer. Everything else is pretty much what you'd expect in a normal airline bathroom. The two benefits actually though being the special hand cream that they gave you, the Octane products once again, an extra soap and a lotion, and in addition to that I couldn't help but get over the floors, it was like a little party in the bathroom.
after my little exploration, when I got back to my seat, there was a bottle of water waiting for me. It seemed like every passenger had one, but it was just a bottle of still water to get us through the rest of the flight as we passed over the Caribbean. We only had a couple hours left at this point, but for the remainder of the flight pretty much until the descent phase started, the cabin stayed pretty much completely dark. I stayed entertained, but if I did want any sort of light or any sort of view, I had to crack my window open. I'd like to see the view of Haiti here as we passed by it. As we passed by Cuba, one of the more interesting things that I definitely had a lot of fun playing with on this flight is the fact that on this map, you can search for any big city in the world and learn about it. So you can sort by continent, you can scroll through and pick any of these cities that are in the list. I hit Boston for this example. When you hit that, it's going to take you over to the city, and when you get there, it'll pull up some information on the city so you can see where it is, and you can learn a little bit about it. About this time I realized there was some other things on my seat that I either hadn't noticed or hadn't used to this part of the flight. One of which being the massage function on the seat panel here, which not that it's the best massage in the world, but it did feel good after sitting here for 6-7 hours. And the other thing is on the front part of the storage area of the seat here there's a universal charging port which I didn't realize. Not that I needed it, there was also a USB charging port next to me, but I did find the universal charging port later in the flight. Also about this time, the lights came up just slightly as they prepared for a final snack service as we were about an hour and a half out from Orlando. This snack service involved a quiche that was delicious, bread that was even better, and coffee that was the best that I could possibly imagine. The fruit was okay, it was kind of hard, but the rest of the stuff that came with this snack was everything I could possibly ask for as far as taste goes. And as we approached Florida and flew over the wonderful blue water of the Bahamas, I couldn't help but marvel at the contrast between this wonderful Brazil flag winglet, the wonderful blue water of the Bahamas, and just the clear blue skies in the distance. And as the Florida coastline came into sight underneath all of these normal thunderstorm clouds in the area, I had some time to reflect on Azul's Brazilian Airlines. Now they're not going to blow you away like the extremes of Emirates or Singapore might have to offer, but I think as far as the standard goes for international business class travel, they hit the nail on the head and maybe even a little bit more than that. I thought the seat was fantastic, the crew was fantastic, they came up and introduced themselves by name before the flight and called me by name throughout the flight, so it had that person ability. I think that the lounge was fantastic, the airport experience was just great. The only thing I think that they could improve upon, if I could offer any suggestions, would be adding some in-flight Wi-Fi, that would be probably the next step for them. And after that, I think the only other option would be adding some more destinations. Right now, especially in the United States, they are kind of limited and they don't have a ton throughout Central America. I think that if they could expand and add some more destinations, they could end up being one of the great carriers of Latin America.
with that adventure, welcome to Orlando International Airport, where I didn't even know yet, but we would be arriving to Orlando's brand new international terminal, which opened about two weeks before this flight actually arrived. So I learned that after getting off the flight, but stand by, I'm super excited to show you around the arrivals portion of that terminal. So leaving the gate area, you can see on the left side at least where the embarking passengers would come through and down the gate. But to the right side here is the stairs that we're going to head up and it's just a big old ramp that goes back and forth a few times as we switch back all the way up to customs. Now one thing I really appreciated was these grand big windows. You can look out at the ramp and all the airplanes, especially the one that you just got off of, considering that in most places, once you get in the hallway for customs, it's pretty much just a dark dingy hallway and there's nothing to see. Down below is the departing corridor for flights where passengers waiting to board are hanging out. And it did look like there were some fantastic options down there. So at some point coming up soon, maybe I'll have to book an international flight departing out of Orlando. Now Orlando's International Terminal does things a little bit differently with the bag claim before the customs check, which I honestly was not a huge fan of because you have to wait for your bag and then you have to wait for customs, whereas usually you go through customs and by the time you get out to baggage claim, the bags are there and waiting for you and you can grab them and go. A little less efficient, I'm kind of curious the reasoning behind it, but it worked for today. Anyway, with that, that about wraps up this journey from Sao Paulo's Viracopos Airport up to Orlando on my first time on Azul Brazilian Airlines, an airline that I would 100% fly again. I love the experience and I thank them very much for the flight. Anyways, welcome to Orlando. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos coming up soon.